Hey everyone, good evening on introduction to Salesforce formulas and validation rules. So this yeah, really is an introductory lecture. So if um, you are already quite experienced, you might find this kind of a little bit simple. But yeah, if you're very new to Salesforce, you know, working on getting your admin on your platform app builder, then hopefully you can learn a few things in here and um, have a bit of a better understanding. So to begin, uh, just a bit of background on who SaaS Guru are and what they do. So they're like online platform, all about you know supercharging, scaling your cert prep um, on their platform and with their community. So Trailhead can be, um, and it's a great place to start learning, but it can be a little bit hard to navigate and know you know where you should go next and exactly what you do and don't need to know and when you're ready to take the exam. And then so they've got a whole bunch of things built in um, into their platform where you know you get these certification readiness scores and questions along the ways are uh, a little bit more than Trailhead, so you can test your knowledge as well and just you know sometimes it's good to uh, be taught things from someone else in a different way and then of course there's gamification in there as well just to give you those endorphin rushes along the way and so there's a community with there as well so like this you know there's live classes and webinars which you're invited to so some are open to the public like this and some are just open to sasguru and um they've got their slack community which is where you can get help so Myself and other gurus on there. Um, yeah, we're happy to answer questions and things on there. So just another good resource if uh, badge isn't making sense or yeah, you're having trouble, you can jump in. And then the LinkedIn community as well is good to join. So it's just the company, Sasguru HQ. Uh, so who am I? Um, I'm Stephen Trumbull. So I'm a Salesforce consultant with Blue Engine Solutions. So Blue Engine Solutions is a boutique consultancy in Washington, DC, America. Um, so I've got seven certs currently, um, a trailblazer community, answers leader, and then I've created uh, like a formula course on Udemy, which I'll kind of provide a code for later on discount course if you're interested in that, which I think is the most comprehensive formula course available anywhere. Um, yeah, like I couldn't find anything earlier, which is why I made it. Uh, yeah. Is my LinkedIn details and things. So if you do want to connect, like I'm happy, but please just send me a little message where you're coming from because I get a lot of random people adding me all the time. But yeah, if you're from Sasguru, just you know one, two sentences and I'll click accept. So into the lecture. Uh, yeah, my accent, I'm from Australia. So if you are struggling a little bit or you need me to slow down at all, um, just pop a message in the chat. I'll try to keep in eye on that and um adjust as needed so yeah don't like feel free to talk throughout won't be offended um at all so what we'll be doing today for the agenda we'll start off having a look like what are formulas and where are they used within salesforce and what you know constitutes a formula like what do you need to make a formula the common operators and functions which you'll use in formulas and then we'll start building some formulas for hands-on. So if you, you don't already, you know, just have a playground up, anything or a dev org, because we'll kind of do one formula together where I'll just show you, um, you know, some new features and then we'll open it up, give you some time to try and build your own. And then we'll come back and see, you know, what you did versus what the actual answer is. Um, and then at the end, yeah, if there's anything, you know, if any of you are working or, or you've bumped into something which you couldn't figure out, we can run through some requests at the end if there is time. There's any real life scenarios. So to begin, um, yeah, everyone's got their cameras off. That's fine. You don't have to have them on, but uh, yeah, just, <laughs> I don't know if you can give like a thumbs up or something with the emoji or in the chat, just if speed and everything is okay for now. Cool. So a formula is just an algorithm that derives its value from other fields, expressions, or values. Um, and so, I mean, like in more basic terms, it's just, you know, formulas will help you automatically calculate the value of a field based on another field. So once we get a little bit more, um, start doing some examples, that'll make sense. So within Salesforce, formulas are used in a heap of different places, um, all through here. And then so just kind of put in bold the main two, which we'll focus on tonight. So for the fields and validation rules. But as you can see within this list, you know, there's a whole bunch of other places. So if you don't know formulas, there's a lot you're going to be missing out on in Salesforce. So very good, powerful skill to learn. And uh, yeah, kind of be that knowledgeable person in the workplace where people can go to you. 
with it. So what makes up a formula? So there's, I guess, five different basic elements which you can use within a formula. So the first one's a literal value. And so this is basically a string or text, if you will, or a number that isn't calculated or changed. So if there's any coders, like a constant, um, it'd be what that is. And then some examples, you know, if you needed to include the value of pi in a calculation for some reason, you know, you're not going to store pi within a field, um, but you could just put the literal value of 3.14 in there, and then you could use that in your calculation, in your formula, or if you needed to um, add some text, and, you know, so put here uh, between uh, quotation marks or space and then the word years, and then we could put the literal value of years into, into a text field. It can, of course, reference other fields, which is what you'll be doing a lot of. So that's when, you know, it could be a field on the same uh, record as what you're working on, or it could be from a parent record. So, you know, if you're on the contact, but you wanted to reference the accounts email, you could uh, put in a merge field for account.email, and then we could do something with that email field if we needed to. Functions, uh, this is what you really need to get familiar with as quick as you can. So there's, you know, well over 100 different functions. We're, of course, not going to go through all of that today, but we'll go through some of the really common ones. And so functions are just system-defined formula. And so what you might have seen is, you know, and, or, if, today, L pad, left pad, uh, begins, just things like that. Then operators, so they're symbols which represent a calculation. So, I mean, really, they're just like your basic high school math things. So just plus, minus, multiply, divide, equals, less than, greater than, not equal to, greater than or equal to, all these different things. And then comments, which are massively underutilized. Um, so each coding language, I guess, you know, formulas, if you want to think of it like that, each coding language has its own syntax to leave a comment. And within Salesforce, um, it's a forward slash, then a star, an asterisk. And then you write the comment that you want, and then you close it off with a star and a forward slash again. So it can be really useful, especially when you start building much larger formulas to put comments in. So formula fields will have a description where you can often, you know, put your comment. But once you start building, you know, 10 line, 20 line, 30 line formulas, um, it can be a little bit hard to reference the correct area in the description field, but then using the syntax, this is what allow you to do inline commenting. So you can say, you know, these next four lines of uh, the formula, I'm trying to do this. So the different types of formulas you can return, um, very similar to your standard Salesforce fields. So you've got your checkbox and checkboxes are just a Boolean. So they can either be true or they can be false, uh, nothing else. And then an example is, you know, an opportunity that is closed. Uh, checkbox. So it's either is closed true, it's closed one or closed loss or false. It's uh, still an open opportunity. Currency, uh, you know, depending on what your org set in, if it's multi-currency, you know, dollar, pound, euro, lira, like an opportunity amount. Date. So this will look like in the background in the database, year, 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 month, month, DD. Um, but on the UI, you might see this depending on your country settings. In America, it'll be month, day, year. If you're the rest of the world, it's probably day, month, year. Um, going through, date, time. So there is the ability to do a time formula, but this isn't really like a standard Salesforce field. And then I haven't had to use this at all. So like I include it, but I don't think you'll ever use time. And then numbers, um, pretty straightforward. Percent as well, something like your probabilities going through and then text, which you will um, do a lot as well. And then, so, you know, if you're going, you remember back to that literal values where I was saying with the years, that's where you'd be returning a data type of text, but you might be combining a number field into a text field and things. Never use time. Is there a better option? Uh, yeah, so I guess if rather than using time, you just use date time. Because at the end of the day, like a time without a date, is kind of useless. Like you don't really need to know 4 p.m. You need to know 4 p.m. on Friday, the 4th of March or whatever it is. Um, yeah. So yeah, the math operators we went through briefly. Um, the other the one I didn't mention is like to the power of, so the exponent. And so that's just a little carrot signature. Uh, once again, reasonably rare to use unless, I don't know, maybe if you're like a landscaping business or something, 
uh, or you're doing those sorts of measurements, you might need a might be doing something there. And then I guess the other big thing to keep track of is uh, parentheses. Um, I may refer to these as brackets along the way, but if I do say brackets, I do mean the parentheses. That's just something I mix up every now and then. But so this would be your order of operations. And then so you'll be using parentheses all the time and then it will change because depending on what you're calculating at what point in time, obviously you're going to get a different outcome. So uh, just be aware because that can trick people at times. So the logical operators, once again, if you've got any kind of coding experience, um, different languages can require uh, different uh, syntax, but uh, Salesforce formulas, you get a little bit more, I guess, leeway. So you can use either a single equal sign or a double equal sign. doesn't matter. They both mean equal. And similarly, not equal. You can use uh, less than, greater than, or exclamation mark equal sign. And then you'll check if two values aren't equivalent. And then down the bottom here, so you can use ampersand, ampersand, or the double pipes to um, do an and statement or an or statement. But the alternative to using these logical operators is you can use the logical function, which is the word and or the word or. And that's my preference. So this is, I guess, how I'm going to teach you. Um, I will show you the how you can use the operators. Neither one's necessarily right or wrong, but um, you want to stick to either you build all your formulas using pipes and ampersands, or you build all your formulas using and and or the word. So kind of whatever makes more sense to you. If you've got certain, once again, certain coding languages, you might have um, you know, previous experience using this way, and then that'll just make more sense to you. You'll feel more comfortable. So that's that's fine. And then lastly, just some text operators you should be aware of. Uh, so that a single ampersand or a plus sign uh, will connect two or more strings. So the examples I've got here, you know, the opportunity amount is colon. You can either use the ampersand or the plus, and it'll do the exact same thing. Uh, so for this, my preference is for the ampersand because the plus can also be used in a math-like uh, function to for addition to add two numbers together. And so I think it just kind of makes more sense rather than um, using the plus sign for text and for numbers, I just use the ampersand for, for all my text. But once again, you know, do what makes sense to you. If you prefer that, that's fine as well. But yeah, there's no concat um, equivalent in in Salesforce. So if you built Excel formulas, you can't yeah, concatenate like this at all. You've just got to ampersand and then your different values along the way. So time to build our first formula together. So once again, this is just you know a very, very basic formula. I'm not uh, claiming that it's necessarily useful at all, but just to, I guess, introduce everyone to the formula builder and how you can find the different fields and things. So what we're trying to get from this is we want to look at the average employee revenue for an account. And so to do that on the account record, we want to have a look at the account's annual revenue and then we want to divide this by the number of employees. So then we'll get, you know, each employee returns an annual, uh, has an employee revenue of X amount for that. So if everyone's got their playgrounds ready, you can build along with me. I'll, I'll try and go, you know, give everyone time to click along. So we want to go to the object manager and then open up the account object. And within here, going fields and relationship, and we're going to create a new field, so a new custom field. And then the field type we're going to return will be a formula. So it should be your third uh, radio button down there, formula. Click next. And then give it a name. So I'll call it average employee revenue. And you can tab across and the field name should return the same. And then so here, this is the formula return type. So this is that slide that I showed you before with all the different types. So in the chat, um, does anyone know what type of formula we want to return at the moment? So yeah, so decimals, uh, Lakshmi isn't um, one. I'm not sure if by decimals you mean number, 
But so with either number, you know, you can return decimals here, uh, however many you need. And then same with currency, you can return decimals as well. So you can do both. But yeah, so with, with this one, um, so the annual revenue is a currency field. Number of employees is a number field. But we, even though they're different data types, these two data types like can talk with each other because they're, I guess, similar enough. That, you know, they're still numbers at the end of the day, just revenue, uh, currency fields. You just see a little dollar sign or um, euro sign or lira sign, whatever it is in, in front of it. So yeah, so we will uh, return currency. I'm just going to keep it to two decimal places. And so hopefully everyone's at this screen now. Uh, if you come onto the simple formula one, I've never used this in my life. It's, um, yeah, I don't think it's really needed at all. So what you want to do is always be using this advanced formula for now. Uh, you might see I've got a third option. This is a Chrome extension. I'll, we can talk about that later. But so if everyone can be on the advanced formula level, and then, so what we're trying to do here is we're looking, trying to compare two different fields. And so to do this, you can just press the insert field button and this will bring out uh, a little pop-up box and it'll show you all the fields on the account level. And then also all these different uh, global variables. But so we don't need any of these for this example. But so what we do need is in account, we need the annual revenue. And then, so we can insert this one here. And so you'll see the label name is what you'll see in this box here. So it's annual space revenue, but the API name is annual revenue, all one word. So this is uh, why you want to be using this insert field button. So, cause we need the API name within a formula calculation. And then we said we want to get the annual revenue and divide it by the number of employees. So to divide, a couple options. You can just type the slash if you want, or you can insert here and you can get the symbol there as well. It doesn't matter if you've got um, spaces either side. Uh, once again, Cecil's formulas, like spaces, tabs, uh, line breaks aren't going to change the, the formula at all. So don't need to be too concerned with that. And then again, we want the number of employees. So we'll click insert field, make sure you're on account. And then you can either scroll down or you can just start typing in number and it'll take you to, um, yeah, sorry, check myself there. So yeah, this is why I like using this one because so on the field, the, the label is just employees but the API is number of employees. So once again, this is kind of, you know, when you're building your custom fields, why you want to try and keep your label as close to your API. So you're not going to get mixed up like this, uh, but this is just a standard field, which Salesforce builds and um, yeah, can trip you up if you're uh, not aware of the, um, the difference there. So at this point, um, what you should do, make a good habit of, is use this check syntax button at the bottom here. And what we're hoping for is get a nice bit of green saying no syntax areas in merge fields or functions. So that's good. But just remember, this just says there's no syntax errors. This green doesn't mean that the formula is doing what we want to do. Okay. So just once again, this is a pretty simple formula, but once you start building something bigger, more complicated, just because it doesn't have a syntax error, doesn't mean your formula is correct. Uh, slight distinction there. And then, so the next two fields is your description and your help text. So often these will be, um, I guess the same, uh, you put the, the same information in the two of them here. So we can just say, you know, what is the, annual revenue per employee at this account. And then down here, the last bit you've got is blank field handling. And then typically, you know, whenever you're dealing with um, uh, kind of math functions, 
you know, divide. You just want to be careful if you're going to treat blank fields as zeros, because we don't want to, um, you know, divide by zero in, in the universe. So alternatively, you can just treat blank fields as blanks. But this will be kind of one of the things which you will need to play around with if you're not getting the result you thought. Often, just this blank field handling section that needs to be altered. All right, come through, and then I'm just going to leave it all the defaults. Um, there, just you're probably logged in as system admin, so you should have read visibility there. You see, um, it's always going to be read only because it's a formula field, so, so no one can edit it, not even the system admin. Just the um, Salesforce calculates this for you, and then you're, if you're in a playground, you just need it on the account layout, but you can add it to everything if you like. Awesome. So let's have a look now. So if you come across to your sales uh, application, I just got it in a different tab. So I can get back a bit quicker. And then let's have a look at Burlington. Okay, so my fields come down the bottom here of the page layout. So we've got average employee revenue. So this one, it's saying that the annual revenue for this one, this account is $350 million and they've got 9,000 employees. So that comes out to, you know, 38,888.89. And, you know, we can do our own little test here. What happens if they've got you know, 7,000 employees? So you'll see here, this formula field, it's calculated upon save. So it's not dynamic. So nothing's changed yet. After we save, um, lost my field. Yeah, then the average employee revenue will come down to fifty thousand, or come up to fifty thousand, going through there. So that seems to make sense. We're going, and then if we divide, if we have nothing here, what will happen is because we said treat blank fields as blanks, um, you know, we're just not going to calculate anything here. And if we put in zero, uh, yeah, we're also, because we can't divide by zero. So Salesforce is smart enough that it's not going to gonna run into this big error there. So have a little play around, you know, different numbers, change around, just make sure you're calculating as you think you should. And then when everyone's ready, um, I guess put a little challenge out for you for the next question. So next one, very similar, just another kind of straightforward math operation. So I want you to find the difference with, uh, between an opportunity amount and the expected revenue. So formula field, and then again, it's gonna be currency. I'm just gonna call it amount and expected difference. Uh, it doesn't matter if you chose a different name at all. And then, so once again, like the reason I chose the word difference is uh, your stakeholders aren't always going to give you, uh, you know, the perfect wording that you want. So the difference is amount, subtract, uh, revenue, expected revenue. Here it is. Cool. So check syntax. That's looking all good. Then we can go next, next, and save. So the reason I like doing this one is because although it doesn't say it, so expecting revenue is a default field, and it says it's a currency field um, as a standard field. But in reality, it's actually a formula field. So you'll see you can't ever edit um, expected revenue. So in the background, Salesforce with this standard field, so your expected revenue is your amount multiplied by your probability of winning uh, the opportunity. And then that gets you an expected revenue. So the, this is technically a formula field. And so now we've built a formula field which references another formula field. So this is something that you can do. Um, but just once again, you know, being uh, 
kind of just keep in the back of your mind, you know, if you keep going a formula referencing, a formula referencing, a formula, you know, if you can get into these like circular loops uh, where it can be, you know, if one formula is calculated before the other, you might not be getting the exact number you're thinking you should be getting. So definitely you can reference other formulas, just don't go crazy with it and, you know, have 10 formula levels deep. So just to show this, you know, if we drop down to needs analysis, so my expected revenue currently 21,000. Let's see if we mark this. So now the expected revenue is only 7,000. And then um, I have to refresh. Hopefully my field will appear here and then it'll come through. So I guess main thing now, well, most people seem to have done that pretty quickly. Um, amount of expected difference here, we go, 28,000, which works out there. So yeah, formulas, not too scary. Some of them are, you know, quick, easy, two, three minute jobs like that. Um, but, you know, it might be exactly what you're, your business needs and you can save the day with a quick easy win so moving on next one we'll do um just have a look at some of the common logical functions so we're using operators just before divide and subtract and now we're going to start using functions make it a little bit more complicated so the main ones you're going to be using a lot are these five so and which returns a true response if everything within your and parentheses is true, and it will return false if just one of those uh, logical conditions is false. Conversely, an or determines, once again, will return a true or a false, but it's true if any expression is true, and it's only false if every expression is false. So need to just be aware of this difference between the two, between and and or, because uh, sometimes Everything needs to be there. Sometimes, you know, one of four conditions needs to be true, and then you're happy to return true if you'll be using a lot. And then, so this will determine once again the outcome and give you, you know, if uh, a logical test, if this is true, then I want to do this action, return this value. Or if it's false, I want to return this value. I want to do this calculation. So, Nina. This is a very easy question to answer, but I'm glad you brought it up. When should you use is null? Never. Is null was deprecated nearly 10 years ago. So is blank can do everything is null can do and more. So this is why is null is not on the screen because is blank is the way of the future. Whoops. Come back. Uh, yeah, so I got it here. Replace the deprecated is null. No problem. And so is blank. So this will come up a lot inside your validation rules. That might be a hint for what's coming later. And then so this will determine once again if uh, you know a field has a value or not. And then so you might have you know when this condition is met, then I, the you know my salesperson needs to put a bit of information here. And then not is you can use it to do the opposite. So it can return a false for true and a true for false which might sound a little bit uh, confusing, but so we've got a value for is blank, but we don't have the, op, like we don't need to build the new function is not blank because we can just put is blank inside of a not statement, if that makes sense. So we can see rather than if something is blank, we can see if it has a value because it's not is blank. All right, so let's build one together. Uh, so. Once again, you know, this isn't the most realistic scenario, but just kind of keeping it um, with fields we've already seen before, keep it nice and simple. Then we're going to try and build a validation rule that's saying that accounts, you know, we only want to deal with accounts which are having an annual revenue of at least $10 million and they have at least five employees. So if the account doesn't have that, you know, don't even want it in my Salesforce org because it's it's not worth my time. If you know, it's a one person shop, um, only doing a hundred thousand dollars revenue, so more than ten million and five. So when you build a validation rule, you can think of them like a checkbox because that's all they are in reality. And so all the validation does is it returns either a true answer or a false. And if it returns true, that's when the user is going to get the error message. And if it returns false, that means they can save. And so they can continue on. So coming back, um, so let's build this 
back in our Salesforce org. So I'm going to go back to object manager and into my account and then down um, the left here, the very bottom will be validation rules. And so we're going to create a new validation rule. And then put whatever name you want here. I'm just going to say large companies only. I'm going to keep it active. And then so in the description, that's where we're going to put, you know, account should have an annual revenue of more than 10 million and at least five employees. So we've got here as well the error condition formula. So if this formula expression is true, display the text defined in the message area. So we can just begin, we can insert the fields that we want. So we know we want annual revenue. Then I'll just put it on a new line. And then we want employees as well. And then so with this, we're saying if it's true. And so if we want it to be more than $10 million, we're going to have an issue if the annual revenue is less than $10 million. That makes sense because what we want is greater than 10 million. So if there's less, that's when we've got a problem. And then similarly for the number of employees, they should have at least five employees. So if they have less than five employees, there'll be, uh, we don't want that either. So if we check this syntax at the moment, no, you can't put 10 M. I don't think so. So yeah, you got to put, uh, one and then seven zeros or 10 and six zeros. And you don't, uh, you can't put like commas in there either. So in the database, it doesn't save like how we like to read it. Um, it's just, you need one zero, 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 zero all the way through. So at this point, so this is often kind of how I like to start building them, you know, just get your basic building blocks in here of what you need and then I'll try to zoom in a little bit for you all. And at this point, so we're looking at two different things and they both need to be true. So this is where we want to use this and function. So if we just going to pop this at the very top, so we can once again use the insert selected function or you could type it in as well. Uh, that would be fine. And so it checks whether all arguments are true and returns true if all arguments are true. And if this formula expression is true, then we'll display the text. Okay, and then so for here, so logical one, comma, logical two, comma, dot, 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 you can add as many logical statements as you want. Then it's gonna copy this uh, annual revenue. So control X will cut it. Then you can double click on logical one, control V, paste it in there. Then same thing for number of employees, you can control X, get rid of that logical two, paste it there. And then so we can check syntax again. And so we're going to get more errors because we didn't get rid of these uh, dots, these periods at the end. So we need to get rid of all of those. Check syntax again. And then this time it's going to say error found. Uh, you know, parentheses. And then, so this is where sometimes Salesforce lies to you. And then the errors aren't always, uh, I guess, as accurate as they could be. So the problem here isn't the extra parentheses because I've got my closing parentheses here. And I've got my opening one here. Yours worked. Yeah. So with yours, Nina, what you would have done is you would have deleted this extra comma at the end here. So you only want, um, like on your very last logical, uh, test, you don't want a, a comma trailing at the end because even though I have an extra comma, the error will return found, you know, extra parentheses because it's expecting a new logical test there. It's not expecting a closing parenthesis. So I can close that and then we can check the syntax. So we could do that as well. We could um, go. So in like the next challenge, you that will be one of the things we'll, we'll expand upon. Uh, so whilst we're just here, I just wanted to show you. So uh, you know, this once again, reasonably simple formula that we're looking through for, um, you know, just looking at 
through different logical conditions. And then so some people would say, you know, it's fine to leave it on one line like this because, you know, it's still quite readable. And then, you know, that, that could be true. But typically what I like to do and what can be a little bit hard within the Salesforce builder is I like to put my um, logical tests on different lines and then as well the parentheses. So I find it easier to read like this where so I know I've got my end statement, which is starting here and closing here. And then I can see test one, test two, test three, four, five, six, going through like that. And so once again, like within, just show you, you know, still no errors found. It's doing the exact same thing. You know, it doesn't matter how many spaces, how many line breaks I've got here. It's, it's, all, it's all fine. And then the comments we were talking about before, this is where I could say, you know, um, because this is a little bit hard to read, you know, how many zeros are there? So I could say, you know, 10 million. Just put in a little comment there, just so I know next time I'm not having to try and like squint and count, oh, there's seven, seven trailing zeros there as the value. So this is, you know, an example of when you may like to use a comment and how you could do it there. Everyone with me at this point still? Yes. Awesome. All right, just zoom out a touch. So coming down here, then we want to put in some error messages. So this is where you should say, you know, we only deal with big business. So if you have like a broad error message like this, the person's not really going to know how um, to fix the error, right? So this isn't that good. Uh, so you kind of want to add on more details, something like, no, revenue should be greater than 10 million. There should be at least five employees, something like this. And once again, you know, this isn't, you know, necessarily a real world example, but for the person who was asking about, you know, using is blank, that's where, you know, you could have this error message, you know, once you know, annual revenue is at this amount, you know, we need to have a primary contact for the account. So we know who to talk to or, you know, this, this needs to be filled in at this point in time. So just kind of be aware um, of your error message because you don't want to just return something really generic and uh, drive your, your users crazy because they'll just stop using Salesforce and go back to their Excel spreadsheet. And so here, the error location, you can choose, you know, the top of the page or a specific field. If you're dealing with multiple fields, typically I just leave it at top of the page. But if it's just one field, you know, something's blank when it needs to have a value now, that's when you, you choose the, the field there. Awesome. And then so just make sure it's active and then we can do some testing. So find an account. And then check. So this one, they've got a thousand employees, $139 million at the moment. So when, when you create a new validation rule, and it's active, even if something, if an account, you know, didn't meet the criteria at that point, uh, the validation rule is not going to fire until someone tries to edit the record. All right. So who saw what happened here? Yeah, I edited it and it didn't save, but do we know why? So I've got my validation rule running. We built the validation rule together. And then, so I put, you know, less than five employees. Try this again, two employees, and I can save this. So why isn't the validation rule firing? So this is two, yeah, but but look, I can save the record. I can change things at the moment, even though this is two and my validation rule is not triggering. Yeah, Kelly with the eagle eyes, good job. So once again, this is where, you know, uh, 
you get tricked with different um, uh, functions and what they do. So we're saying accounts should have an annual revenue more than 10 million and they should have at least five employees. And so your first thought would be, this should be an and statement because we're saying this needs to be and this needs to be true. But in reality, if either one of these fail, then the validation rule. So we need to change it to an or statement. So if we come back here, so returns true if all the values are true or false if one or more values are false. And at the moment we're returning false, but we need to return true to trigger the validation rule. So instead we're gonna come back here and switch this to an or statement and then it'll return true if any expression is true. So if I come back in to my validation rule and you know, nice and easy thing to do, we can just change that and to an or, check the syntax again, nowhere is found, save that. And now I'll just save this to another value under five. So we've still got $150 million there. And then, yeah, so now we only deal with big business. Revenue should be 10 million and there should be at least five employees. And so if we bring that up, that'll save. And then if we make this something small, once again, this will trigger again on the annual revenue. So yeah, this is, yeah, kind of just a little example of when the business requirement will say one word and you'll think that's the function you need, but you don't, you need a different function. So this bit, um, yeah, I mentioned before, you can use like these logical operators instead. So using the ampersands or the pipes. So I'll just quickly show you how that would look in this validation rule. So what it would be is we get rid of this or, and then the closing parenthesis, and you need to get rid of the comma here as well. And then, so for an or statement, then you just had the double pipes and you know, you could have it all on one line or separate lines. And that's what your uh, or version would look like or double ampersand would be the, uh, the other way there. So yeah, one or the other is not necessarily right or wrong, but um, yeah, my preference is, is typing the word out. Yeah, I mean, there, there's not really a difference, Mohammed. Um, like, yeah, there is some really nerdy answer, which I truly don't understand. It's, it's too much, but yeah, it's kind of just, just preference. But I know there can be issues, like if you're, you know, if I had, um, you know, a whole bunch of statements like this, and then down the line, then I had like an or, uh, you know, if you started trying to combine like pipes, pipe or one time and or written out another. So you don't want to have all of these combined in, in the same formula. So you just want to pick whichever you like and then just stick with that. But yeah, once again, I'd, I'd rather do, do it like this. You cancel out of that. Okay, so the challenge now. So we're gonna try and combine a few different things, um, just I guess over the next five minutes or so. So when an opportunity is closed lost, the closed loss reason custom field, so you're gonna have to build this, cannot be blank. So what you need to do this, uh, to, yeah, do the challenges. So create a new text field, so just a, a normal text field, not a rich text, just text field, call it closed loss reason or something similar. And then these are the three functions you'll need uh, inside your validation rule. So start going with that and I'll So after the closed lost, you're dismissing the parenthesis there. So that's closing off that is pick val function you've got. So that should work. Oh, sorry. This is in a private group chat. I'm gonna share this with everyone.
just so other people can learn. Um, so yeah, the top half of that message, just missing the parentheses after the close lost and the second part should be working. So yeah, hopefully uh, everyone's got something similar to this. It should be working now. And then once again, it doesn't matter if you put is blank before is pick val. Um, that doesn't matter at all. Once again, I I like the how this has been spread out on the different lines there, uh, which is good. And then, but if you wanted to use the ampersands, you know, all you need to do is rewrite the formula, you know, something like this. And you could do that, but yeah, my preference is for and so I did want to show you as well, just quickly, um, we're, we're at seven o'clock, so I won't keep anyone too much longer. Uh, there's just this Chrome extension you can get called Better Formula. Um, what's the actual name? But yeah, if you just search like Salesforce Better Formula or Better Salesforce Formula Editor, um, you can get this look out. And like why this is nice is because now you can start doing like tab uh spacing just to really help with your view as well and then the lines is a little bit easier and then when you get to these parentheses like they'll show you um you know where they're like paired up a little bit easier and you get the color coding as well so you get the blue for functions the green for fields the orange for literals and things so like i just find and then it calculates as you're uh typing you know if you've got any errors or anything so now if i put in like an extra comma here straight away it's saying you know we've got this uh problem without me having to press the check syntax button so this is yeah no, not necessary if you're not allowed um extensions in your org uh bad luck but yeah it can be it can be a nice addition like uh in your thing so yeah so this is exactly right uh it's called better salesforce formula editor